Also tonight, Spokane nonprofits are disputing a state audit report that claims conflicts of interest in warming center contracts. Mayor Nadine Woodward called for the audit into the city's Department of Community Housing and Human Services. It covered January through December of 2019. Ian Smay with our CREM2 investigative team joins us live from the newsroom tonight to explain the claims in that report. Ian? Yeah, Mark, there were a lot of findings to sift through in the state auditor's office report. The four main areas of concern for the state included awarding of agreements with community groups, conflicts of interest, how the city gifted public funds, and city policies. These findings are serious, and we have already begun taking steps to improve policies, procedures, training, and practices. We will also report back on progress to the state auditor at regular intervals. The audit claims the city failed to resolve conflicts of interest in two warming center contracts. The auditor's office found that former city council president Ben Stucker was involved in awarding Jules Helping Hands a warming center contract in November 2019. Jules was identified as a high-risk contract because of its vague partnership with the Smith Barbieri Progressive Fund. A founder of that fund has also donated to Stuckert's mayoral campaign. City law states that Stuckert should have disclosed this potential conflict of interest. Now the other conflict of interest arose from the departure of department director Kelly Keenan. Keenan was involved in awarding a contract just short of $500,000 for a warming center with Catholic Charities of Spokane. The problem? Keenan had left his post with the city in October 2019 and was hired by Catholic Charities a few months later. However, the report did note that Keenan had left his city job before the contract was awarded to Catholic Charities in November. Current City Council President Brian Bagg said in a press conference today that the report showed a lack of financial controls. But what it did identify is that we were lacking in financial controls um, in several areas and the city's committed to getting those controls in place uh, because you know, not only want to get it right when you're um, uh, doing procurement and awarding contracts, but you want the appearance to look right as well so that people have confidence. Now, one more thing to note is that the state auditor's office simply investigates issues and reports its findings. The office does not have the power to discipline anyone in any way. Back to you. All right, Ian, thank you very much. Also tonight, Catholic Charities sent us this response to today's auditor's report. They said the city of Spokane approached them in 2019 to operate a low barrier emergency center for families who were experiencing homelessness. The charity says Kelly Keenan, who then worked for the city and now works for Catholic Charities, was not involved in negotiations or approval of the contract. They also say that none of the current senior leaders for their organization were ever contacted by the city or the state for this audit, and they're now in encouraging the state auditor's office and the city of Spokane to revisit these concerns and correct any inaccuracies. I also spoke with Ben Stuckert this afternoon. He too says that he was never contacted by anyone regarding this audit report, and he tells me there was no conflict of interest and that no one from the agency ever donated to his campaign. Here's what he told me just a short time ago. So your position is because Smith Barbieri didn't make a contribution to your campaign that there is no conflict of interest, that the conflict only would have occurred if the donation had come from Jules Helping Hands. Right. Jules Helping Hands is who we con the city contracted with, and I was on the RFP committee. Now, if Jules Helping Hands had donated money to my campaign, I shouldn't have been voting on a contract with them. But neither Julie Garcia nor Jason Green, who are the founders of Jules Helping Hands. So you can't say that everybody that donates to a nonprofit means you can't vote on a contract with that nonprofit. That would make every single contract we have a conflict of interest. And he too also says that state and city leaders need to go back and correct these inaccuracies immediately. We do have more information on this story. Just go to creme.com and of course we'll continue to follow any developments in this story. There were two other significant findings in that state report. There was no documentation that the city had a fair bidding process for contracts for flooring repairs. Those contracts were more than $11,000 and $13,000. There was also a gift of public funds for a consulting agency employee. The department paid for two mortgage payments and one car payment. Employees say a department director approved those payments, adding up to more than $2,400.